Okay, so I tried something new this week uh-huh. as I got into like dialing in tones and all that. Yeah, on instead the Kemper. Of, on the Kemper, instead of just playing my guitar and like making it sound good and delay and like all that stuff, I decided yeah. to have the uh, tracks that we're going to use for the weekend going as I cycled through right. profiles. The stems. Yeah, so I'm having those play through and just kind of similar to the mp3 you know like i'm planning center but they're playing along and so i went to like my go-to profile um and went through like a couple other ones and as i kept cycling through i'm giving each profile probably 10 seconds so i'll play right listen go down over there it, it right the profiles are amp sounds if you don't know the kemper yes yeah. uh, so i'm going through all the drones logging sounds. in a new amp miking it up and sure every, sure, sure every 10 seconds yeah you know? And what hit me was the amps that by myself, when I would play them, uh, that I didn't like, uh-huh. I all of a sudden really loved uh-huh. in a mix. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, the characteristic were, it's too honky or mid-rangey. Right. right. And what was funny to me was all of my kind of go-to ones, I really like clean profiles, mm-hmm. clean amp sounds, I could like barely hear them. Right. As I was cycling through, you know, that got lost, you know. It's the old bedroom tone conundrum. Mm Mm-hmm. So it kind of, it dawned on me. I had heard before that, like, pedals, guitars, amps are tools. Yep. And so it kind of, it brought up that imagery to me of, like, saying I never need, like, a flathead screwdriver. Right. You know, I only want Phillips screwdrivers. They do everything, and, like, they fit in everything, and they're going to be great. It's like, don't throw away the the flathead screwdrivers because you never right. know when you're gonna need them right uh, right some amps are flatheads yes some amp are Phillips and this might go for like a, a pedal like you play a pedal especially you you see the guys flipping pedals they Absolutely. get four or five pedals a month where they just they play them for like a day sure and then flip them is it not to say that that's bad I'm guilty as charged absolutely we're tone junkies we're t- <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have to go through them with a certain yeah, frequency it's, 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 uh, yeah it just was a reminder to me of uh, getting the right pedal or the right amp or the right guitar for the job right for what you and for that for what I was that song I was playing I needed to cut through the mix kind of play up high right right and you know, so I played our, our tangerine, the Tone Junkie tangerine. Yeah, which is an orange amp. Orange amp never right. gets talked about really. Orange AD thirty uh-huh. with blue through with a blue, and a, and an H thirty speaker. Mm-hmm. So kind of a very mid rangey, and then adding some more mid range and highs and mm-hmm. stuff. And they get, yeah, yeah, honky amp, honky, very honky. Yeah, kind of nasally. Uh, totally like old school Jimmy Page rock tone really mid rangey mm-hmm. yeah sounds like this yeah yeah absolutely. and what was funny and, and I'm playing worship music so right. when people dialed in our pack uh-huh. no one was going oh my gosh this tangerine is the worship sound it's true it didn't get a lot of love And but there I am probably out of the whole pack that was the one that sounded yeah. best what guitar were you playing I was on my Strat bridge pickup Strat bridge pickup some you know delay uh-huh. reverb into orange Super honky, uh, yeah, British amp. And even when I stopped the track and just played, I didn't love it. But you bring that track back in with the yeah. drums and the bass uh-huh. and all that stuff, and it's like there I am. It's like if you go listen to like, especially like the old Zeppelin stuff, or even yeah, any old Zeppelin record. Go listen to the guitar. If you can find an isolated track, even better. If not, just listen to the tone. Ask yourself if you would want that tone by itself. Right. Half of, of those tones, like on the old Zep records, are absolute, like, lo-fi, kind of weird mm-hmm. sound. They're weird sounding. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know what this reminds me of? Um, we have a saying, you know, in Nashville, there's like a saying among songwriters. You get a lot of egos in the room, and people have all these ideas. There's an the idea of serving the song, right? Mm. That's, that's probably true for guitar players as well, mm-hmm. especially on a Sunday morning, right? Like, serve the song. Um, you were telling me too, like, there's kind of this thing, like, have your own sound, Mm -hmm. like, what's your sound? Mm -hmm. And like, does that serve the song, right? Like, Mm -hmm. sometimes you got to sound like something else that's maybe not your thing, right? but it fits like a glove, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing it makes me think of is like, tone is an equation, right? So like, how many times are you like, man, I want that really great Strat bridge pickup tone, 
Never. Yeah. Like that's not mm-hmm. like, you know, right? You right. Get, people love like a Telly bridge tone, but mm-hmm. they're not like, oh, that, that single coil strat bridge. I'm going to play that for 30 that, minutes straight. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like right. the strat's got the neck, right? The uh-huh. neck and then the two and the four position, right? right. That's the strat. And then, um, you know, the other ones are there, mm-hmm. but, um, oh, this strat has the best middle position. Like it doesn't happen, mm-hmm. right? But like, you know, in the song like you're talking about, strats are really scooped, right? And that, that pickup's going to be really thin. Mm-hmm. It's not going to have anywhere near as much mid-range as like a, a bridge a telly pickup. Mm-hmm. So then when you throw a super honky amp at it, it's like all those highs, all the, some of that low, right? Probably not a lot of lows in mm-hmm. it. But then it, it gives it, it all that mid-range and all that punch, and all of a sudden it sounds like, a, like something, you know? Mm-hmm. And it fits well in the mix. Yeah, like if I had done the same experiment cycling through with a Gretsch or a Telly, I probably wouldn't have landed on that. Yeah, you might have landed on something with less yeah. mids because the pickup would have had more in there anyway. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was a good exercise, I think, for me to, to to think about, to your point about you know serving the song, is right. how does the tone I'm dialing up for this Sunday, mm-hmm. how does it mix with even the tracks we're, we're going to play with sure am i fighting some of those am i in the same range as some of those mm-hmm. that are the keys or the whatever we're using yeah um and just really not, it's still finding my voice and and my sound yeah but not doing that in isolation just with headphones playing through an amp but like right. really getting into the sound of the whole band so right. even at home was kind of like a revelation actually it's a really tricky thing to like understand how a guitar should sound like in a mix because totally. like Bedroom tone is all about like wide mm-hmm. take up as a lot of frequency, right? A lot of bass, a lot of highs, and like really be a big sound. Mm-hmm. But then you get in, in a in a band, right? And you don't want to compete be competing on the low end with the bass player. You don't want to compete with the clack of the acoustic guitar and the cymbals on the high end. Mm-hmm. And so like you come into a narrow field of like where the guitar is allowed to be. And then you throw the keyboards in there, right? Yeah, and you know, the the keyboards, right? They're always, I mean, typically, they're going to be doing something at like a verse, right? They're going to be doing like, you know, a low pad. But ask a keyboard player what they do at the chorus, right? They're mm-hmm. always going to move the voice up. Mm-hmm. Or they're always going to add the high, right? They're yeah, always going to add an, another too. voice on yeah. top or something, right? That gives the guitar even less room to get in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, to your point, you know, like you said, clean guitars were hard to hear, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah, when you listen to... Like Hillsong or Bethel, those guitars sound really clean. Mm-hmm. But if you listen to the isolated track, they're dirtier than they sound in the yeah. band. And like we had an experience, like you came and visited uh, my church when we were having like a big like tenth anniversary thing at this, at right, this yeah. like, kind of theater. And you said, "Man, the guitar sounded clean." You know, they mm-hmm. sa- I was surprised at how like clear and like clean they sounded, mm-hmm. right? And that happens too, right? Things always, to me, send to, tend to sound cleaner mm-hmm. in the mix. Like, I can hear that edge of breakup right. in my in-ear. But when it translates into the whole mix, mm-hmm. it just sounds clean. Mm-hmm. You don't get all the nuance of, like, the, just the slight breakup, mm-hmm. right? So that's why, like, a little more dirt, a little more mid-range really, like, punches through. Because that nuance of, like, an edge of breakup tone or, like... Mm-hmm. You know, a strat just barely like breaking up. Yeah, it's, a lot of that gets lost. You yeah. know, in the whole sound. Have you ever? Uh, were you ever like an actor? I like have actor friends that were like in theater or anything like that. <laughs> no, you're from LA, no. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of a thing that they talk about a lot when they're doing rehearsals and practicing and all that stuff. It's like if you think that you're speaking loudly, like speak even louder. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, yeah. exaggerate everything. Right. Because when it comes off of the stage, right. it, you end up looking t- timid or quiet. Uh-huh. Um, and so if your character is supposed to be doing something crazy and loud, like do it almost to a fault where like you're thinking, like this is way over yeah. the top. By the time the audience sees it, it just looks normal right. because of you know, everything that's going on, on the stage. And you're not by, your, you know, you're by yourself. You're in this big cast. Right. So you have to be larger than life. So I kind of took that too as uh, exaggerating effects and making them... Like if you're gonna boost a solo, like really boost it ten or fifteen. Yeah. I mean, get loud, yeah. um, because then it might in your ears you might feel like, oh yeah, I nailed that solo, got louder, and everyone's like, I couldn't even hear you. Right, right, right. You know, so kind of like you're saying, run things wetter than you might think, or yeah. run things louder than you might think. I always, I, that's what I always do. I always find that 
the subtleness, the subtlety mm -hmm. of reverb or even delay can really get lost. Mm -hmm. And your guitar can all of a sudden sound clean and dry. And so you really got to, more than, than you do in your bedroom, cut the bass, mm -hmm. right? Because that just gets muddy. Really push the mid-range. I mean, not too much, but I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I tend to, I notice when I play by myself, I love a tone like this. As soon as I step in with the band, playing that same tone sounds fine. But as soon as I put on like a little bit of Klon, mm -hmm. a little bit of Tube Scream, just something that adds a little bit of mid-range, all of a sudden it sounds like my guitar again. I go home, play that same sound, and right. I go, oh, that's too mid-rangey. Why, <laughs> why, would why I was use I playing that, that all? Exactly. What was I doing, right? But yeah. that's the thing. You know, it's funny. A buddy of mine called me um, uh, last week, and he plays at Elevation, right? He's one of the many guitar players at that church. And uh, he was telling me he, he played with James Duke one time. Hmm. And, you know, James Duke kind of known for that washy kind of sound, right? But he was saying when he played with James Duke, he could hear him in the monitor really clear. It seemed like drier. Mm. you know than he was used to and also he said that James was playing a like, pretty mid-rangey he plays a chieftain and so it was like it was a lot more mid-rangey and punchy than like he felt like the record sounded mm -hmm. but that was the live sound you know that he could he could hear it you know kind of clearer mm -hmm. you know and uh, yeah it was interesting right I mean that's it seems like a lot of people come to this conclusion maybe right. maybe we're onto something mid-range <laughs> is like a, the guitar's friend it helps us it does yeah it helps us, and maybe, uh, let's see, what else? Subtlety can get lost in a mix. Mm -hmm. You kind of got to exaggerate. Kind of, I feel like you got to exaggerate the mids. Like, what's the difference between bedroom tone and in the mix? Cut the mix tone. Mm -hmm. I think you got to exaggerate. Mm -hmm. You got to exaggerate the mids. Maybe some delay. Maybe some reverb. Yeah. Maybe some high end. I think people get the high end right. Mm -hmm. I think it's the it's the mids that get wrong, and and maybe the bass. You, you gotta if you're gonna cut the bass, really cut the bass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even mix on like re reverb and delay and all that stuff. Uh, to me, it's just doing it with other things that are even while you're playing. Yeah, don't be afraid to you sure. know get down there and change a mix, save it. Um, just to kind of say, hey, this whatever worked at home, don't be married to it. Right. Once you get into the actual setting. Hmm. You know, um, yeah. and if you haven't tried the play along with backing tracks yeah. or an MP3, I'd, I'd totally recommend it. What do you use? Great. A rehearsal mix? Uh, no, that was just the Ableton session for okay. what yeah, we're yeah. going to run. Yeah, um, absolutely. So there's a couple guitars, keys, sure. uh, but drums and bass are all. Yeah, you've got a rhythm around. section. You can hear how the guitar is going to fit on top of that mm -hmm. and do that whole thing. Yeah. Last thing I'll say, I recently switched to some AC30 sounds. I've been running the Kemper Live. And I recently switched to the brilliant channel, the profiles that we made of mm -hmm. an AC30, a UK AC30, you know, the trendy P and W thing. And um, man, though the brilliant channel of that amp with um, playing P90s, or but we were just trying it with your Gretsch, yeah. you know, the Sparkle Jet, and whether it's the Filtertrons or the P90s, um, you know, that brilliant channel of the Vox, that top boost brilliant channel is really kind of the sound of praise and work. Like so many amps are modeled after totally, that. Totally, yeah. But getting back to the original, like, well, the original, it's a, it's not it's not a vintage one, but, you know, kind of an AC30 sound, what first hit me was, man, there's like no bass here. Mm -hmm. There's like none. I mean, it's really yeah. like a, like, it's a, th I don't want to say it's a thin sound because there's there's mids in it, mm -hmm. but there's, you try and like palm mute a little bit, mm -hmm. just get like a chick, 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 chick. Right. You know, there's no bass in there. You can't take over the bass frequencies. Yeah, yeah. you can't. Yeah, yeah, you can't get in the bass's way. <laughs> right. Whoever designed that amp really knew what a guitar should sound like in a mix. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They help you out. They did. Yeah. And 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 th yeah, the Voxes help you out. And uh, I don't know. As soon as I started playing that amp, I got a lot of compliments from people who don't normally comment on the tone. Mm -hmm. And it's because I think it just sits right. It, it gives the guitar a voice. It's not competing with things. It doesn't sound cloudy. Mm -hmm. People can hear me very clearly, you mm -hmm. know, with that kind of sound. Yeah. You serve the song. You serve the song. Serve the song. I got nothing left, but... now you're out. Serve the song. Serve the song. <laughs> <laughs>